நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேனல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகா குரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி திஸ் இஸ் பார்ட் டூ ஆஃப் த வீடியோ ஹவு டு ஜட்ஜ் அ ஹாரோஸ்கோப் In the sequence of houses of a chart, see if the first house is strong, Lagna Lord or Ascendant Lord is strong, if Lord of 5th and 9th houses are strong. Then check the current major planetary period and minor planetary period, that is Dasha and Antar Dasha. And if the native is entitled to enjoy the benefits. If 6th and 8th house Dasha is happening, the native life will not be good. the native will face some hurdles try to predict at which point of time the native will recover from that crucial situation to predict the date and time of an event analyzing major planetary period and minor planetary period that is dasha and antar dasha is important even in a single sheet of software horoscope printed out of computer rasi chart Navamsa chart that is D9 chart major and minor planetary period that is dasha antar dasha period at the time of birth current major and minor planetary period etc is given then comes the factors that render the wider picture about the native navamsa varga chakra and ashtaka varga are taken into account then we can predict if any particular incident will happen in future or happened in the past as i mentioned before assess the strength of the planets assess the strength of benefics and malefics in the chart yet if you assume that all the nine planets are important and all nine planets need to have good strength in a chart it is obvious that you are at a beginner level in astrology In any chart all the nine planets should not be strong if all the nine planets are strong then the nato will be a beggar the planets will have time only to compete with each other in this case in an auspicious chart if only those four planets which are benefic for the lagna or strong and the other four planets which are inimical for the lagna or weaker the nato is bestowed with a good life To add further the native must go through the dasha of auspicious planets to the ascendant that delivers benefits during the native's lifetime when the native is young and approaches you for prediction check for the 10th 6th bar for profession and 7th house for marriage if the native needs a job check 6th house if the native wants to do some business then check 10th house based on native's education you can predict his job or business nature if the native is looking forward for marriage then check 2nd 7th and 8th houses if a person of around 70 years approaches you for prediction he might be suffering from diseases or deaths in this case check 6th bar So according to the age of the native and his expectation check the corresponding houses If a native approaches you for marriage predictions then check second and seventh house Second house is a house of family and seventh house is a house of marriage If there are malefics in these houses the marriage is delayed When you check for an event check the corresponding bar that is the house and check the house lord and check the significator that is the planet which gives the corresponding karaka for example to predict marriage check the strength of the 7th house check the strength of the lord of the 7th house check the strength of the significator of marriage that is venus from these three points you can predict marriage to specifically predict the date of the marriage check the major and minor planetary period that is dasha antar dasha dear beginners when you are checking a chart don't panic these are the steps you must follow to make the prediction take the rasi chart assess the status of the first house status of the ascendant lord 
check if the ascendant lord is in conjunction with malefics or under the aspect of a malefic there will be changes in the character of the native and in the life the native will not have a good character the native might be skeptic or angry person or with low self esteem there will be some hurdles in enjoying the fortune so when an ascendant lord is in conjunction with a malefic the native will not enjoy a good life when an ascendant lord is surrounded by benefics that is when it is in conjunction with benefics or aspected by benefics the native will intend to be optimistic self confident and will have the strength to face the challenges as the head of the human being is important so as the other body parts to do an activity one needs good hands and legs so after checking the first house check the fifth and ninth house when the head and body is in good condition check dasha antar dasha especially the current one that is the current major and minor planetary period that is current dasha antar dasha to know if a chart is beneficial for example let us say for venus ascendants like libra or taurus and for mercury ascendants like gemini or virgo if all favorable dashas of the planets like saturn mercury k2 venus happen the native will enjoy a great life till 70 years a beneficial chart is the one who has dashas of all favorable planets of his ascendant lord team for venus team ascendants saturn mercury and venus planetary periods must happen and for jupiter team ascendants sun moon mars and jupiter planetary period must happen for jupiter ascendant native being born at the end of the venus dasha the dasha of sun moon mars rahu and guru will happen here rahu is a chameleon planet if it is in the house that belongs to jupiter team rahu will turn to be a yoga that is an auspicious planet and will do good to the native astrology is simple it a great art of mathematics it is important to check first if the ascendant lord is strong fifth and ninth houses are strong and what is the status of the lord of the major planetary period some may question how native enjoys a good life despite the dasha of sixth or eighth lord happening it is important to learn the exceptions rather the rules the rules are taught by the teachers and it is important to know the exceptions and know the knack of using those at the right place it is very important in astrology i reiterate this point in all my videos it is important to know the exceptions in astrology does everybody suffer during the dasha of 6th and 8th house no not at all if those lords are in a position that refrains from doing bad effects certainly the dasha will not be bad so if the four avayoga or inauspicious planets or in 3 6 10 and 11 they will do benefits this is the exception indeed as per the original dictum it is said that the inauspicious planet must be in 3 6 10 or 11th house Let me explore deeper with my experience of 30 years of research in astrology and enlighten you with more intricate details. If our yoga or inauspicious planets are in 3, 6, 10 or 11th house with friendly status it will do benefits. If 6th lord is in the 6th house it will give only diseases, deaths and enemies. The 6th lord is not supposed to be in its own house. still there are some exceptions during the dasha of 6th or 8th lord if the lord of the 6th or 8th house is in friendly status in upajaya sthana like 3 6 10 and 11 it will not do bad rather good to the native this is how a native could benefit even during the dasha of 6th or 8th house lord Sometimes few of my YouTube subscribers make very hasty comments without watching my full video. They write their comments in a haste that their life is good despite the inauspicious planets, 
मेजर प्लानिटरी पीरियड और दशा पीरियड आई कैन रिस्पॉन्ड टू ऑल द कमेंट्स आई चूज द क्वेश्चन इन सच अ वे दैट वेन आई रिस्पॉन्ड टू द क्वेश्चन ऑफ वन ऑफ माई सब्सक्राइबर्स I make sure it includes answers for thousands of my subscribers. Everybody does not enjoy the dasha of ascendant lord or dasha of fifth or ninth houses. So how do people live a better life even if these dasha are not happening? The reason is that when the avayoga planets that is inauspicious planets for the lagna or residing in upajaya sthanas like 3 6 10 and 11 with friendly sthana bala status or friendly planetary position strength they enjoy a good life therefore to predict a chart check the strength of the ascendant house ascendant lord check the strength of lord of fifth and ninth houses and other houses check the strength and status of current major and minor planetary period that is current dasha and antar dasha even if they are malefics and being exalted see if they have some subhatva or beneficence or sukshma strength that is subtle strength check if dasha lord is in trine or in quadrants with beneficence all the planets do not perform well in quadrants and trines all the planets that are exalted does not give benefits similarly all the planets that are debilitated does not give bad effects explore the intricacies while it is important to analyze the exalted and the debilitated planets the trines and the quadrants the sin houses the fact of subhatva that is beneficence and sukshma strength that is subtle strength is of paramount importance If the sun disappears in sixth, eighth, or twelfth house, don't assume that the native cannot avail a government job. In this situation, if sun is aspected by a strong Jupiter, and Venus gets combusted by sun, your prediction will go wrong. So don't go for the common statements like if the planet disappears in eighth house, it will not give benefits. You come to this conclusion as you were taught that the eighth house is a sin house. When the ascendant house got malefic aspect or malefic residing at the ascendant house it would be like native cutting his own throat or native digging his own grave all the houses render both good and bad effects it was never mentioned in the original dictum that the eighth house is bad all the houses can render both good and bad it was never mentioned that eighth house only renders accidents deaths diseases disputes etc the eighth house also offers the benefits such as unexpected fortunes life abroad long life etc the subhatva or beneficial eighth house renders these benefits to assess whether the planet will do good or bad consider its subhatva strength that is beneficence level bhabhatva strength or maleficence level subtle strength or sukshma strength once you can assess the subhatva strength bhabhatva strength and sukshma strength of the planets and the houses you definitely need no guidance of others and even the guidance of mind for the current situation eighth house is more important as majority of the people prefer to live abroad and settle abroad In olden days the 8th house is used to assess only the longevity and death of the native. So for those whose 8th house is subhatva it gives long life and abroad life or settlement in foreign countries. Even if the major or minor planetary period that is dasha antar dasha is strong see whether it is subhatva that is beneficent strength with sukshma strength or subtle strength. For example for aquarius ascendant the sixth lord dasha that is moon dasha is happening for example let us say for aquarius ascendant the sixth lord dasha that is moon dasha is happening i always say that moon dasha is bad for aquarius ascendant or kumbh lagna for capricorn ascendant or makar lagna the sun dasha is bad all the aquarius ascendants are destined to suffer during moon dasha There are also some exceptional situations where the ascendants enjoy the benefits of the inimical planets 
dasha on account of the exceptional rules if the inauspicious planets or avayoga graha is in 3 6 10 and 11 then it will do benefits let us take the same example of aquarius lagna that is kumbh lagna the moon dasha will give the worst effects it may give diseases to the native or based on age it may give deaths for example as soon as the moon dasha starts it will cause the native to lose a job or let the native to start a business get tangled in problems and then lose the money that is the responsibility given to the moon as sixth house lord moon will also do bad effects through its significance or karaka that is maternal property issues bitter terms with mother moon's karaga like liquids or white colored liquids etc or let the native to be a debtor or suffer from diseases related to the significance or karaka of the moon the antidote to this bad effect as per the original dictum is the moon's position in upajaya sthana such as 3 6 10 and 11 another point to notice the moon never considers any other planet as an enemy but it can debilitate let us take an example that for kumbh lagna that is aquarius ascendant the moon is in third house with the aspect of jupiter certainly the moon dasha will not spoil the native we can witness this in the charge of the fortunate people if the jupiter aspects from sagittarius jupiter strength is strong in its own house when jupiter aspects from libra its strength is less if it aspects from sagittarius that is from its own house and mul trikon house it has immense strength so when jupiter aspects the moon in the third house to the ascendant suddenly instead of giving deaths to the native since the moon is in its friendly house and aspected by jupiter the major planetary period of the moon or dasha of the moon will not spoil the native you will notice such a planetary position in the charts of the fortunate people or in the charts of the vips let us take the next example sixth house to the ascendant when moon is in sixth house to the ascendant that is cancer and it is aspected by jupiter from scorpio there will not be bad effects to a certain extent it may deliver mild diseases and deliver auspicious deaths that are borrowed for good purpose and the major planetary period of the moon will deliver good effects i'm explaining to you the fundamental difference between subhatva and pabhatva moon is the lord of the 6th house to the aquarius ascendant and there is a difference when moon is in 3rd house to the ascendant and when moon is in its own house to the aquarius ascendant when moon is in its own house that is 6th house to the ascendant with jupiter aspect the diseases and deaths would be in control or auspicious expenses will happen that will raise the standard of life of the native that is a person who is raised by his deaths there are people like vijay malaya who enjoys life despite crores of deaths he might be traveling in bmw or flying in flights with thousands of crores of debts we common people have nightmares of debts even for 10000 or 20000 rupees people who are in debts with thousands of crores enjoy a better life this sort of event happens on account of a subhatva or a beneficent sixth house lord for aquarius ascendant that is kumbh lagna when moon is in sixth house with subhatva that is with beneficence these sort of effects can be expected let us take the next example the moon is in 10th house for aquarius ascendant the moon is debilitated in scorpio while the moon is debilitated it leads to the state of no debts whereas if the moon gets nichabanga that is cancellation of moon's debility there will be more debts your mind will be in a whirl deciding whether the moon is in a state to give benefits or adverse effects well therefore when sixth house lord is debilitated there will be no deaths or diseases in contrast if the sixth house lord gets nichabanga that is cancellation of debility there will be more deaths or diseases 
In addition, when the planet is debilitated, the significance or karaka of the planet is also affected. When moon is debilitated, the native's mother's health might be spoilt or the native will be a person without mental strength. Since the moon is significator of both mind and mother, it affects both. Whatever karaka or significance pertains to the moon gets affected. This is the effect of debilitated moon in the 10th house. It is good that moon gets debilitated, but it should not get Nietzsche Bunga or cancellation of debility. When moon gets debilitated, it loses strength to give it significance or karaka. Let us consider now the 11th house. Here, the moon is in the 6th house from its own house. For Aquarius ascendant, the Sagittarius Rashi is good. Today, we saw the effect of 6th house lord in different houses. We will do some videos in future, for example, the effects of 6th and 8th house lord for different ascendants. The house lord when residing in the 6th house from its own house will not be able to do good or bad effect of its own house. The same rule applies to any house. I repeat, when the lord of a house is residing in the 6th or 8th from its own house, then it will not the good or the bad effect of its own bower or house. What is the 6th house office? Deaths, diseases and enemies. So when the 6th house lord disappears in the 6th house from its own house, then he will not give the 6th house effect such as deaths, diseases and enemies. So for Kumbh Lagna, that is Aquarius ascendant, if moon is in Sagittarius, based on the above concept, it will not be in a state to give the effects of the 6th house which are deaths, diseases and enemies. The moon at 11th will do benefits if it has subatwa or beneficence. Analyze the steps gradually. So don't complain that the moon is in the 11th house in my chart and it doesn't bring any benefits. I told that moon in Sagittarius for Kumbh Lagna will not do bad effect but never said it will bring benefits. There is a difference between these two statements. If 6th house lord does not deliver its house effects, the ascendant can escape from the problems. Yet, if the moon is in Sagittarius in connection with the natural benefits like Jupiter or Venus, it will raise the native to greater heights through deaths. Even in this case, it is done through the house and its significance, that is Karaka. If you take a chart and analyze the Chandra Dasha, that is moon Dasha of the natives, the point that I have mentioned will exactly match. For example, for Aquarius Ascendant, if Moon is Pabatwa, then it will bring loss to the maternal properties. The native will sell all the maternal properties ending up in deaths. In contrary, if it is Subatwa, the native's life will be improved by selling those properties. The difference between Pabatwa and Subatwa is paramount importance. When you are capable of reasoning the past events in a chart, you will be able to predict the future events too. So take a chart of the native who has crossed the moon dasha. The rules and the exceptions that I mention now will perfectly fit. The moon's karaka or significance would have been affected. The native would have faced loss through the significance of the moon. It would have been tangled by the sixth house effects such as diseases, deaths and enemies whereas when it is subatwa it would have done good effects. This is the way to analyze the chart and dasha that is major planetary period step by step. Thank you.